Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Welcome back, techies. I'm Dave Graveline, and this is ITTV, Into Tomorrow Television. I'm back from my recent trip to Turkey, where I was hosting the global press conference for IFA, the massive tech show that we broadcast from every September in Berlin, Germany. Stay tuned later in the year as we bring you two weeks' worth of broadcasts from this huge global tech event. Don't forget that you can win prizes by calling into our radio program. Call us anytime, 24-7, with any tech question. Maybe you have a tip for our audience, or you want to rant about some tech product that just didn't live up to your expectations. Share your tech rage with us as well. Our Ask Dave hotline is open for you 24-7, 1-800-899-INTO. That's 800-899-4686. And of course, you can also download our free Into Tomorrow app for your mobile device and participate that way too. Just be sure to select the audio option. We love sending prizes out to our listeners who participate on the show and we want to hear you. Let's jump into our time machine, our tech time machine, and take a peek at some of the tech achievements of yesterday. Chris is up next with his popular feature this week in tech history. Among other things this week, he reminds us of the birth of a very well-known tech company. This week in 1851, Linus Yale of Newport, New York became well known for his patent of the clock type lock. If the name Yale sounds familiar, it should. Yale locks are still among the top brands of security devices sold today. In 1946, Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering was founded with around 20 employees. In 1958, Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering changed its name to a much simpler Sony. In 1961 this week, Alan Shepard became the first American to travel into outer space on a suborbital flight. And this week in 1993, the World Wide Web, developed by British computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee, was made public domain, allowing the public at large to access it free of charge. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History, brought to you by IFA Berlin, the global innovation show for consumer electronics and home appliances. Get more info at ifa-berlin.com. Make sure you get social with us. Stop by our Facebook page at fb.com slash into tomorrow and hit that like button. Then check out our official Twitter feed at IT Radio Show. We love it when you get social with us. Don't forget to subscribe to these video updates too. Hit up our site at intotomorrow.com and click the YouTube link. Then hit that subscribe button and you'll never miss another ITTV update. We've always said that you can never have too much hard disk space. But with so many options on the market, what do you choose? Well, our good buddy Ken Higgins from HGST stopped by this week and showed us a couple of their new drives. It's always a pleasure to have our next guest with us. Ken Higgins is the director of sales branded products for HGST. A Western digital company, I might add. They've yes, been around is. for some time. How are you doing, Ken? I'm doing fantastic. Always fun to have you with us. And you brought two brand new, two brand new external products. hard drives. And well, one's an internal, one's, one's internal, an external. Yes. Yeah, but two brand new drives, two brand nonetheless. New drives, nonetheless, correct. All right, let's uh, let's talk about which one first has you most let's excited. Talk about the NAS drive. The DeskStar NAS. Yes. Now, first of all, let's tell people what NAS stands for in the event they aren't familiar. Okay. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, mm -hmm. as opposed to DAS, which is Desktop Attached Storage. You really use that term? <laughs> Actually, we do in the industry. Oh, okay. People who have multi-bay <laughs> enclosures know what that means. Ah, gotcha. But otherwise, we have to have a network, but then we can attach storage in the form of a DeskStar NAS. Correct. And store all kinds of good stuff. So people like Synology, QNAP, Thekas build multi-bay units to, text, to attach to the network. These are drives that go inside those devices. Hmm. Okay. And the, the advantage to this drive here is that it's the fastest drive available in the market today, 7,200 7, RPM. 7,200 RPM. RPM Whoa. and 64 megabytes of cache. Nice. So data transfer rates are very, very fast. And what kind of storage capacities do these drive Up to have? four terabytes. Nice. So it depends on how many slots you have in your diskless NAS device. <laughs> yeah, that easy That's for you to say, say. right? Yeah. <laughs> but you could have uh, four or five slots, so you could go four times four is 16 terabytes. 
Wow. In one device. So not only... Four times four is 16, right? Uh, most of the time, yeah. 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 Even, <laughs> even in disk drives. Yeah. <laughs> even in disk drives. <laughs> But not only do you have then incredible storage capacity at four terabytes each drive, but the fast response time. Fast I response mean, at 7,200 RPM, you're retrieving your data faster than ever before. Correct. Nice. And the good news is we also have a thing called the Rotational Vibration Safeguard. Can he say that? Rotational Vibration Safeguard. Correct. What the heck does that mean? Well, when you put more than one drive in a, in a multi-band enclosure, all those drives spinning. Have you ever picked up a hard drive when it's on? Notice that vibration, that spin? Yeah. And, well, and one shouldn't be doing that generally. Correct. But yeah. if you ever want to kind of see how it feels, you can right. do that. It sort of spins and you're sort feeling of spin, that. You feel that torque. Mm -hmm. All that vibration in a multi-bay unit all goes through the entire chassis. And what that does, it causes all the drives to kind of vibrate. And that's not good, no. because when the, when the drive vibrates, the heads that are reading the data can slip off the track. Oh. So we put the RVS, or the Rotational Sensor Safeguard, okay. into the drive. And what that does for you, that actually anticipates rotation vibration, keeping the heads on the track so you get smoother reading of your data. How do it know? I mean, it, it's anticipating it, it's, it's, it. It anticipates. There's an algorithm. It's patented by HGST, uh -huh. so it's secret technology. My competition does something called balancing. So they balance it at the factory, kind of like getting your tires on your car balanced when you drive off the So factory. it works really well at the factory, but then in real life, it, it can, can't yeah. possibly stay balanced. Correct, over time. Uh -huh. This one's always active, so it's always actively balancing the drives in the multi-bay enclosure. Gotcha. All right, so that's the Desk Star NAS, which yes. is awesome. Now, we're going to talk about a favorite of mine, and even mm -hmm. though it's brand new, I'm already loving the, the Turo S. The Turo S. What does the S stand for? Stands for speed. Very good. Is this another 7200 RPM? We just say S. We, oh, okay. <laughs> for speed. <laughs> <laughs> but they come in really cool colors, too. And let's face it, these days, it's not only about storage and speed, it's about style. And why shouldn't it be if we've got an external exactly. drive that we're carrying around? So this is one of the thinnest, most compact hard drives in the market. It's got a standard USB 3 interface on the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And it also has a 7200 RPM hard drive inside. So it is 7200 RPM, but Correct. we just say S. Just say S. Yeah. And what's cool about it, it's an aluminum enclosure. It is. So it feels nice to the touch. It's nice and, and pretty. It's kind of the idea there. Very, and this very is my favorite one. This is, I'm told, ruby. Ruby. So don't call it red. Don't call it red. Call it ruby. It's ruby. And they're available in four colors. Four colors. You've got your choice of gold, platinum, silver, and of course, ruby. My favorite, ruby. Very good. And I love the thinness. Now, this is a, a real typical one that you can just literally slide in your slide pocket. Slide in your pocket. And available in two capacities, 500 gigabyte and one terabyte. Okay, very nice. So one terabyte to go uh, is really handy. Exactly. Do we, do we have price uh, points set around, on these? Around 99 bucks for the one terabyte version. 99? 99 dollars. Well, that's excellent. Not too bad. Yeah. And then 79 dollars for the 500 gigabyte version. Okay, very cool. And did we mention the price on the Desk Star NAS while we were talking about uh, it? It's about 229 MSRP, but you can find it for under 200 bucks on okay. the internet. Good. And again, we we're talking about up to four terabyte and the 7200 RPM speed. You've got Correct. some really nice stuff. But what are some of the other cool things you like about the, the Turo S? Turo S is the transfer rates. That's what the drive does for you. Having the faster drive inside the enclosure means about 23% faster than a 5400 RPM drive. Mm. So if you're moving vast quantities of data, and a lot of people in post-production, a lot of people that have big movie files, that's time and money. In fact, it's funny you mention that because I'm just going to say Chris on our team who shoots all of our videos and edits and mm -hmm. so forth, this is a lifesaver life for, for him because you've got that storage capacity and the speed to be transferring those kinds exactly. of files. Exactly, exactly. But not just for video, but for anything else. I mean, whether it's a, a business or consumer situation, mm -hmm. the fact that's going to do a good job for you. And fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the like key. That. Uh, speed. Speed. S. S. S for speed. <laughs> and both available now. Uh, in, on the shelf, ready to go. Love it. Ken, always a pleasure well, to chat you, with you. Thanks for stopping by our studios again. And we got to get you into Miami more often because not only do you have cool stuff to always talk about, but you're fun. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. <laughs> our pleasure. <laughs> oh, and be sure to stay tuned. Ken joins us on the radio show talking about some really cool stuff next week on our three-hour Into Tomorrow radio broadcast. So be sure to stay tuned for that and watch for an upcoming video, especially if you've got a PlayStation 4, we've got some really cool stuff for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our free tech newsletter. It's delivered to your inbox once a week and contains all sorts of 
useful tech information, links to our show pages, info on all of our guests, and lots more. Stop by our main page at intotomorrow.com and enter your email address right there in the red box. Then click the link in the confirmation email that you'll receive. And that's all there is to it. Well, that'll wrap it up for this week's trip into tomorrow. We'll see you here again next week and, of course, on the radio. I'm Dave Graveline. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.